back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. My name is Jamie. I'm Jeff. And we are here today to do another installment of our Board Games and Brew series, which is basically just a video series where we talk about board games and board gamey things. Indeed. Today's topic is all about how we learn games, which for Jeff and I is pretty different. Very different. Very different. So let's just jump into it. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Okay, so. I can't not look at that. I'm trying really hard not. We tried to be fancy and we've hooked a monitor up. So I can't can not look ourselves. at the monitor. So if you notice us looking in weird directions, it's because we're obsessed with ourselves and we can't not look at ourselves on the It's monitor. also flipped, so like I'm, <laughs> I'm on over the left. there and Jeff's over yeah, there. It's yeah. Trippy, man. Freaking out, man. Freaking out, man. Anyway, how we learn games. How we learn games. You go first. Okay. Wait. For me, I learn games in a lot of different ways, actually. I can learn a Do game you? in pretty much almost any way, with the exception of sitting down and listening to someone read the rule book word for word. Primarily, how I learn a game, there's a few things that I do. Number one, if it's a light game, I'll usually just read the rule book. Kind of like with Eldorado. Sure. So I'll read the Fair. rule book and it's pretty simple. If it's a heavier game, the rule book is not where I'm going to start because I find it overwhelming. Oh, I see where you're going here. Yeah. yeah. Fair. So what I would typically do for a heavier game is I always start with a YouTube video. I have my two go-to spots to learn games. The first spot that I will always, always check is if Before You Play has a video on that particular game. Mm -hmm. I really like watching them to learn games because not only do they like teach you how to play they also do a playthrough so it's like okay i'm learning the game and now i can actually see them put it play into game. action yeah they're amazing at explaining games and <clears throat> not only in the teach part but also like during their playthrough they'll actually explain what they're doing why they're doing it like all of those things mm. and i find it super helpful and i just love before you play, Monique and Naveen, I think they're great. So They are really good. And if for some reason Monique and Naveen do not have a video, my number two go-to is always Watch It Played and Rodney Smith. Fellow Canadian. Fellow Canadian. Rodney Smith. Rodney Smith. And I honestly, like, he is like king of explaining games. He makes it so accessible. Yeah. And he goes through everything from, like, setup and, like, each turn and the cards, like, everything. And just in a like, calm, oh. relaxed demeanor. Yeah, like I could watch him explain anything. I could fall asleep listening to Rodney. <laughs> would you though? Fall asleep listening to Rodney? Yeah. Absolutely, I would. He's like the board game's David Attenborough. Yeah, that is a great comparison. Yeah. Is David Attenborough, no, he's not Canadian. I'm thinking of David no. Suzuki. <laughs> David Attenborough is not David Suzuki. Can confirm. Two different people. Two different people. So though that's primarily how I learn how to play a game. Now, if I'm not the one who is learning the game in order to teach the game, which for Jeff and I, usually that, depending on the game, that's usually how it works. I usually learn it first. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get better at this. Yeah. If I'm not the one that's learning the game in order to teach it, I learn better if someone explains it to me up front and then we do it and then I can ask questions throughout. But really, like, that's primarily how I learn games. I don't do well if someone, like I said, is just reading the rule book to me because I find it really overwhelming specifically when it's a big game. There's some exceptions to that, like with Mariposas, you read the rule book and I was able to follow along. I think there's a fundamental difference that you haven't maybe mentioned and maybe you have. Mm, awesome. There's a difference between having someone read you the rule book and the game's not in front of you and yeah. you're not interacting with the board to show yeah, you yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And then someone who's reading the book also pointing the things out on the board. Yeah. There's like just reading the rule book with no examples or rule book plus having the board and components in front of you. Yeah, and then there's certain games where sometimes you just gotta play to learn them, but I usually do like to have an, an overview or an explanation before that. If I can't find a video from Before You Play or Watch It Played, I'll just see what's out there, but I also, I still need to be entertained while I'm learning. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like, I can't, I find it really hard watching a how to play video where someone is just very like monotone or they do the board game voice. The board game voice. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but like <laughs> Rodney Smith has the board game voice, but I feel like he's the originator of the board game voice and he does it in such a great way. I think there's different iterations of the board game yeah. voice. It's almost and like- Some people do it well and some people don't. Yeah. Very like, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like when you go to a museum and they're talking about a thing and you have like the earphones in yeah. and the person's talking to you about the thing and it's just, 
emphasized yeah. and unnatural a bit. Yeah, unnatural. That's, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like, there's no personality. It's the same with, like... I think the video. people that are good at it make it so that it seems natural. Like Rodney. Like Rodney, where other people, when they do it, it doesn't seem natural. Yeah. I think that there was something else that I was going to mention, but I'll throw it over to you because I can't remember. So I tend to shy away from teaching games. One, because I don't think I'm very good at it. Two, I get in easily frustrated. And normally it's self-inflicted frustration. I have a bigger, broader problem that transcends the board game realm. <laughs> I don't like to feel stupid, whether it be my own self-inflicted stupidity or that I'm interpreting that other people think I'm stupid. <laughs> That is a big problem and I get very frustrated and it usually translates itself when I don't understand something. So to learn a game and teach it to someone is opening up a whole can of worms of just having a bad situation develop where I'm frustrated with myself and then I get frustrated with the other person because I feel like they're not understanding what I'm saying and then it just cascades. Anyway, I kind of decided that I will avoid teaching games just to avoid that situation. I've always been the type to learn things by doing. Read me a rule book all you want, I'm not going to get it. I'll, I'll get it but I'm not gonna get it until I play. So when we're in our group, I will be the person that's not paying attention to the reading of the rules and how to play stuff. Like I just won't. And the play group just needs to be okay with that. I will always go last on the first turn if I can so that I can see Jamie go and then two other people go. And then I'll, by the time it gets to me, I got it. You know, there might be some nuances with the game on how to score. that I'll have to ask why we play. And I try not to be super annoying because it is annoying to be taught a game and not to be listening and then play and then be like, wait, what's this thing? So I try to avoid that, but that really fundamentally is how I learn a game. I just need to play it and ask questions as I play it. So recently we were chatting with the guys over at Table Knots. Doolin actually plays the game himself, which I've seen other people do and heard it talked about and I've never done. And I was like, I feel like that is a good way for me to remove the other person from the formula. So if I'm learning a game and I'm getting frustrated, then it's internalized. I'm frustrated with myself. I'll get over that and I'll learn. I recently was able to implement that and I put innovation out on the table because we wanted to learn how to play innovation. I put innovation out on the table. I read the rule book. I did watch a quick video, which I normally don't do. I watched like a 10 minute how to play video, which helped. I can't read a rule book and visualize how all of that comes together. I just can't. I don't know how people do that. But once it was out on the table and I read the book and I played it, I did play a couple cards in front of me. I'm like, okay, this all makes sense. It just like clicked. Right, there's my finger snap. I haven't done this on a video. Oh my God. I have so a tendency to like snap my Jeff finger. Jeff snaps his fingers by doing this. And it's a very weird way. Like I snap. like all of his fingers. I snap, I guess, with the wrong finger. Yeah, which then catches all the rest. And it's like, Anywho. he's like, anyways, it's very quick. Anywho, off topic. I learn games by playing. I can't sit and listen to Jamie read a rule book and teach me how to play. It just doesn't work. And it can be difficult in, in larger games. Yes. Teaching helps me learn yeah. but I feel like we'll get a game to the table even if we feel like we've learned it this just happened recently with Valor and Villainy you know you read the rules you figure it out and then we're like halfway through the game it's like do we need to watch like a quick video about mm -hmm. this and so sometimes we might actually pause our game halfway through and throw a video on and then I'll be like oh okay now we get it. Valor and Villainy is the example of me identifying that I can get very angry with myself and that comes across as anger yeah. And sass to other people. That's so messy. Battle and Villainy was my initial attempt at learning a game. We got it. We played a first round. I, I stumbled through the majority of that game. We ended it early because it was just... I kept just, dying every round. That game off topic is super difficult. Okay. Um, very punishing uh, in two player. And then we didn't play for a couple days. And I was like, I feel like I have all of that down now. Like yeah. if we want to play again, I got it. So all the frustration was gone. We played it again and it went flawlessly. Yeah. I think another really big thing for us too that helps us catch on to games quicker is when there is a reference card that mm -hmm. we can kind of follow along for turn order. That before, yeah. um, that's like huge because if I can have something in front of me and it's like, okay, I can literally just walk through this step by step instead of typically otherwise I, I would literally the have the rule book open, which is kind of like how when we play like Castle of Burgundy, because we don't play it that often, have this stupid rule book open I and don't have understand. to flip through like 25 pages to find what we're looking for. It really frustrates me when games, Castles of Burgundy is a perfect example, yeah. when you don't know what the iconography means, 
and you have to look through the book every friggin' time to find it. Yeah, I really appreciate games that identify that and just give you a small little reference card because then if I'm teaching a game too, and you can like follow along on and, and Jamie's card. like, well, what, what can I do on my turn? It's like, well, it's right in front of you. Just right look at right. your player card, like four, like yeah. shows it. It took me a long time in life to identify that I don't, like I wasn't great in school. I was average and I never really knew why because mm. I always thought I was a pretty me. smart dude. And then it <clears> took a long time for me to uncover that I just learn by doing. I think that's really important to keep in mind when learning and teaching board games is that like you have to be patient with everybody because everyone learns differently and yeah. like in our player group, which is typically like me, Jeff, Zach, and Jason, my brothers, we all learn differently. Zach has to re read the rule book from front to back and yeah. Jason will watch videos and Jeff needs to learn by playing and I can just learn however. I think mine's the most frustrating. <laughs> Truthfully, yeah. like, and I'm okay saying that. Yeah. And to the point where... Well, because, like, you're trying to teach him, and you're like, you're not listening to me. I mean, luckily now, I think our group, we all know each other well enough, obviously, that it's okay. But if I'm with new people, I would I would make it a point to say... I'm not going, I'm to, not listen going to, to listen to you. I will listen. I will hear what you're saying, but I'm not really absorbing any of this. I will get this once we start playing. Because yeah. I just don't want them to feel bad. I don't want, the, I don't want to seem like I'm being rude. Yeah. But I, I really am just like, this is not helping. Yeah, I think it's only it only frustrates me when <laughs> when I'm trying to explain something and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not retaining yeah. any of that. And I'm like, I don't think that you're actually listening, but anyway. I'm not. I have recently also started playing through some games for myself. I did that with mm -hmm. Alien Puppies. Mm -hmm. But once again, like that's real that would be really hard to do with like a big heavy game. I think it's key on the, the big setup. Then just becomes, instead of how to play the game, then it's a question of how do you maximize your strategy. Right. Like, it's one thing to learn the game, and then it's another thing to be good at it. So that when learn questions come up it. about, like, can I do this? Can, can I do this? Like, uh, you know, what does this card mean? Then figuring out all the little triggers. That's the next level. There's one thing to get the board to the table the and, play, and play the game. But it's another thing to be able to answer all of those questions that are going to come up. And also, too, we're not super strict not on the rules. We're not sticklers for the rules specifically in our first playthrough because you can't get it right. If we're playing consistently the same, yeah. and neither of us or our playgroup are getting put at a disadvantage because, because their rules are different than ours, in my opinion, you know, whatever. And I'm not <laughs> saying like, we did our best. I'm not saying like core game mechanic rules, no, no, no. but like little tiny nuances. There's like, we are constantly, we'll play a game, then we'll play it a second time. And this is classic us. Oh, Jamie, we've been playing this wrong the whole time. Or oh, yeah. Jeff, we've been playing. It's like, oh, okay. And then we'll pivot. And then we'll pivot and then we'll change. But so long as like, we're both making the same mistakes. And having fun and having playing, fun. Gum, playing gums. I like to play gums. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> but like, we don't care. And I know that that yeah. probably rubs some people the wrong way, especially people that are super stringent with rules, and we get it. Like, stick first. I just think there's so many different ways to play games, and everyone's unique that we just don't care for playing something perfectly. No. And I don't know how anyone could do that. Like, if you primarily play like heavy Euro games, <sighs> I guarantee it, we're not playing those right 90%. And I think so it I'm, does get easier because like yeah. at the core of all of these games. Oh, I can learn a game so much easier now versus oh, when we first started. Like I can pick up on things. You hear that? That's a good snap. Yeah, just same. Like, like it seems like as we go along, things just get a little bit easier yeah. because the core mechanics are the same. Oh, this is a deck builder. Oh, this is a bag builder. Oh, this is worker placement. Like those core mechanics transcend all games. So that's how we learn games. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I'd like to know how other people learn games. And if you have, if you have any suggestions, strategies or techniques. Yeah, if you have any strategies or techniques for us that knowing how we learn games now. Again, I mentioned Doolin gave me some great advice over at Table Knots and. And that's been super beneficial. So if you have anything like that, we're always looking for support and help and being better we gamers. We want to be better. I'd like to be able to teach better. That's yeah. like my biggest goal. Like I would love to be able to do more how to plays on this channel, but like Jeff will know, or Jeff will know, Jeff knows, I'm not the best at explaining things. I have, I see it so perfectly in my brain and mm. then it comes out and I'm like, well, basically, and then I forget how to play the game. I don't even know what it's about. Yeah, Jamie has this weird mental block where we'll, 
have just played a game and I completely and then we'll talk about it the next day and she's like talking and I'm like what were you playing what were you playing how do you not remember any of this like once I know how to play a game I forget everything I tend to it tends to stick and I remember apologies in advance for how many times I'm looking down did you look down a lot oh yeah yeah we're just trying out this new thing because you probably noticed in several previous videos our focus is always off and it's such a struggle I have have bad eyesight so when I look in the viewfinder I'm like perfect perfect yeah. focus and then I get it to the the computer and I'm like Ugh. it's a struggle we appreciate the patience <laughs> we're doing our best like, let us know down below how you learn games we would love to know wouldn't we to, I love chat with people in the yeah, comments Jeff loves to chat if you like this video please give it a thumbs up hit the bell notification if you'd like to see more and don't forget to visit your friendly local gaming store for all of your board gaming needs for us here in Halifax that is the a boardroom game cafe downtown Halifax you can find all of their information right here Ding. and I will also put a link <laughs> to their shop down below in the description so if you're local to Halifax definitely go, go check them out see them and when COVID's over you'll probably see us there playing we games. Will, yeah, I can't wait the, the boardroom board game, game cafe. cafe basically we think it's really important for you to support local if you yes. can and that's what we're trying to do with the boardroom game cafe and if you like what you see please subscribe and don't forget to follow us on social media if you're interested you can find us on instagram at foster the meeple we're kind of in tune there that was good are we dancers yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Anyways, we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. There it is. I was looking at the kit. I was looking I at was the too. Okay. There Goodbye. Later days. Are we ready? Don't look at the screen. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at it's the screen. It's fun. Especially because like then we're like both looking like cross eyed. And I think another. <clears throat> <clears throat> Whoa. <laughs> Something was caught. Oh, was in my voice. That's always talking without me when I gotta reset the cam. <sighs> were you talking or was I talking? I don't remember. What were we talking? That's when you start seeing the issues. <laughs> <laughs>